Welcome back. So we've got two gentlemen uh, joining us to weigh into that matter. Uh, Mr. Matai Semeribe, a legal practitioner. Thank you for coming on this morning. My pleasure. We also have Emmanuel Anene joining us from Abuja. He's a national legal advisor of ANDP. Thank you for joining us as well today on the program. Well. Thank you, Chamberlain, and thank you, Nigerians. All right. So this judgment yes the governor did say it's a dissenting judgment it's not a unanimous judgment even though we'll come to see perhaps where his point is or what he may be alluding to but the entirety of this majority judgment how does he stand for you well uh let me say good morning viewers because um Concerning this judgment, particularly the majority judgment, I am of the view, with due respect, that uh, it has a tendency of being lost when it is given what you may call the reconstitutional test. I say this because there are two basic and fundamental points I felt that the tribunal or the majority you know, judges appear to have lost while carrying out their function or their duty. First of all, there's what you call some preliminary and fundamental issue, which is the issue of jurisdiction. I have raised a fundamental question. Is the tribunal still seized with the action in question that they adjudicated upon in view of the fact that the election we are talking about took place on the 16th day of November 2019. And if there's anything, the result of that election was announced on the 17th, which is the next day of November 2016, I mean 2019. Now the question is, on, if by the constitution, if you go to section 285 sub 5, it requires that for there to be, for the uh, tribunal itself to be vested with the decision to hear the matter, the petitioner in question must first of all file the action in question within 21 days from the day the result was what, declared. And if the result was declared on the 17th of November, the presumption is that by early December, the matter ought to have been what, filed at the tribunal. And then from that December, you begin to count 180 days, and which presumed that the matter or the tribunal will cease to have jurisdiction by May, so to say. Now, the import of that is that first, can this judgment still stand in the face of this constitutional provision that has provided time? We'll come to that. That is which, one. Which okay. of the event do you say happened on the 16th? On the 16th was the election itself. Election took place on the 16th of November, 2019. Then the announcement took place the next day, which was on the 17th. Yeah. That is talking about the declaration of the results. Now, from that date, you begin to now count 21 days for purpose of filing the petition. So in other words, are you saying this is what? A pre or post election? Matter? No, no, no. no. This, they don't have it, jurisdiction to rule on the matter? No, first of all, I am saying that if any action is to be taken to vest jurisdiction of the court first, mm -hmm. it must be done within the, within the confines of the provision of the constitution. That's one. Then secondly, on the issue of the subject in question, that is the issue that was brought, that is that the court should determine that they were unlawfully what, excluded. With the greatest respect, I think that the case in question ought to have been a pre-election matter in view of the fact that that was an issue that came up before the election itself took place, so to say. Because I remember quite vividly that that was a case where notice was issued by INEC to even in Kogi and Bayesa that the time for their nomination to be filed in will lapse on the 9th of what? Okay. September. All right, let's get Mr. Nana to also give his opening comment. Well, the judgment may, because we already see some people jubilating, but is it too early for them to be going about it in that way? Um, good morning, Nigerians, once again. I think uh, my learned friend in Lagos studio missed a lot of points. 
is not abreast with the happening or what happened in Bayasa. On the 16th of November, 2019, election into the office of the governor of Bayasa State was conducted. On the 17th of September, 2019, November 2019, 17th of November, 2019, a return was made. And that return was David Lyon of APC. Now, there was a pre-election matter that went up to the Supreme Court. And on the 13th of February, 2020, the election of David Lyon of APC was nullified because the deputy governor, Degi, Honorable Degi, had some issues with his names and the certificate. Now, the Supreme Court went further to order the Independent National Electoral Commission to issue certificate of return to the second runner of if he met the constitutional requirement. Now, premised on that, on the 14th day of February 2020, that is on Valentine's Day, INEC made a fresh declaration wherein His Excellency Governor Dredi was declared winner and returned. Now, 62285 that my learned friend cited, when does, when does the file 21 days begins to count? In the eyes of the law, the declaration and subsequent return in the, on the 17th of November 2019 never happened because it had been overturned by the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Now, 21 days begins to run from the date the declaration was made. And the declaration in this instance is the declaration made on the 14th of February. And ANDP filed a petition on the 26th of February, 2020. So that takes it out of it. He's not well abreast with the matter. Now, with the, issue, the second issue is what he talked about, uh, a pre-election matter. Now, what happened was this. ANDP made a, a, a nomination. And that nomination was received by INEC. And INEC wrote a letter to ANDP, drawing their attention to the fact that the deputy governorship candidate is underaged. Now, it was within the time allowed for substitution. And that is 45 days. ANDP wrote a letter. It just for the, for, for the sake of being uh, 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 abandoned as concern. Now, renominated another deputy candidate which was submitted to INEC and draw the INEX attention to the fact that Section 31, and I want everybody to read Section 31 of the Electoral Act. Section 31 of the Electoral Act says, any political party shall nominate any person they wishes to, uh, to sponsor in an election to the commission within 60 days, provided, and that is a proviso there, the operative words are provided, provided that the commission shall not have the right to exclude or disqualify any candidate. These are the prov clear provisions of the law. So the operative word there is shall, which is mandatory. And the other one is proviso. And if you have a proviso in any statute, the interpretation of that statute is predicated on the proviso. Now, Section 31 clearly takes out the power of INEC to disqualify anybody. That power is vested with the court. If you read subsection 2 of section, uh, section 31 of the Electoral Act, he said any candidate for an election shall file his document, shall file his nomination, he shall file all his uh, particulars alongside with an affidavit stating the fact that he has complied with all the constitutional provisions. Now, subsection 3 provides that INEC shall within seven days of receiving this information, publish same at the headquarters of the constituency, in this case, Yenegua, where the election is going to take place. Now, what it means in section four says any person can apply. So that is so section four of section 31. Any person can apply to INEC after payment of prescribed fee for certified true copies of this document. Then yeah, yeah, yeah. section Anne. five now okay. says any person, I'm coming. Is that section five says any person who is of the opinion or who is led to believe that the information so supplied 
by the candidate who is standing in for an election can approach the high court of a state of FCT or the Just federal high court to nullify that person's candidature. Any person, include any person, any person can do that. Now, subsection six says, if the court is convinced that information so supplied by such candidate are false, the court will now nullify the candidature of that person. These are clear provisions of the law. So the power to exclude or to, to the power to exclude or to disqualify candidate is taken away by this electoral act and decided let, let, with the established court of law. Okay, let, let me let uh, uh, Barstow respond to some of the provisions yes. that he's highlighted. Uh, quick one. First, let me deal with the issue of um, the action that was filed in February 26th. Saying that the initial yes. action was non-existent. Yes. The position is that he is mistaken, with due respect to my learned colleague, is mistaking a return that was made from a declaration by INEC. Now, that declaration didn't change. What was declared in November, on this, and that's on the 17th day of November, remains what was declared on the 14th by INEC. It didn't change. So he must not mistake it for the return. The return that was made in February is different from the return that was made in, in November 2019. In other words, what I'm saying here is that he is mistaking the declaration because the language of the Constitution says declaration of results. He's not talking about return. So in other words, your action must shall be filed only upon, I mean, within 21 days after declaration of results, not upon the return which was of any what, person. Which was what date? Which was, the declaration of results was done on the 17th of November. So meaning that if that action must be filed, to have its substance being heard by any court in this land, particularly the tribunal, it must be done within after 21 days from the date of the declaration of the result, which was done in November. What was done in uh, February was a return because, one, the result that you had declared in November didn't change when it was done again in no. February. So what That was one. So, secondly, on the issue of disqualification, please, yes, I'm, I'm because... trying to clarify the point. When he talks about uh, disqualification, he must distinguish between when INEC, you know, when an application is made to INEC and that application is not complete, vis-a-vis -vis where that application is complete, but a person does not have the requisite, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, indices to be able to contest the election. Now, in such a situation, when you are talking of disqualification, it does not fall within INEC to do so. But in a situation where the application in question is not proper, just like talking about filling from, why then do you file the affidavit and so on and so forth? Now, let's assume that irrespective of the fact that the political party in question has agreed, or should I say, had nominated, had validly nominated his candidates, and they now refuse, with the greatest respect, to file the affidavit, to file the form um, ECF uh, uh, 1 by, uh, to INEC, would it be deemed? that they have validly done the nomination that the law requires them to do. Mm. It will be so, deemed that they have, by implication, surrendered or decided to be not interested in continuing with the, with, with, with the election, okay. as it were. Let, let, me, let me ask uh, Mr. Nene this question. Well, some of the things that you have said so far would seem you know, a little confusing to some people, but let me ask you this straight up. Does INEC have a right to come up with a date or schedule of activities for an election? Yeah, before I answer that question, let me respond to what he just said. Supreme Court ordered Independent National Electoral Commission to look at the results and see if the runner-up met the constitutional requirement. Now, on the 14th day of February 2020, what happened was not only a return, it was declaration. Because all the votes that were cast for the line of APC were voided. That led, that led INEC to another valid declaration. Because INEC cross-checked their records and found out 
that Dwedri of PDP having met the constitutional requirement is hereby declared elected and validly certified. So what is he going to do? He's changing history. And it is, if you look at section 31 of the Electoral Act, he said if a political party files their nomination in a prescribed form, he's trying to supplant his emotions or his intentions with the statutory provisions. It is not that way. Once a political party files their nomination in a prescribed form, if there is a valid nomination, the INEX power, boardroom power to disqualify candidates is taken away. If you look at that, let me to jump in here now before way, you respond to the second shall question. Not disqualify yeah, just a minute. Or exclude. You now, say now that what... if there is a valid nomination. So at this point, the point he's making is that you haven't even fulfilled that condition precedent of a valid nomination to warrant to even argue that your candidate see, was that... disqualified. That provision is resided with the court. That is why section, subsection 6 of section 31 said, if we are led, he is the one alleging. We have the opinion that we have complied with the constitutional provisions. Now, it is now in the domi domicile with the court of law to decide whether, looking at the document we filed before the Independent National Electoral Commission, whether we have met constitutional provision or not. And not Again, ask, so answer that question, Mr. Nene. Just one moment. Just one moment, Mr. Nene. Answer that question. Answer that question frontally based on the requirements of the law. Was ANDP yes. duly... Did they file these, these, these documents duly, knowing that one of the candidates is underaged? You see, you see, you see, you see if you say knowing... Do we need the, the courts question, to prove that, Mr. Nene? Do we need the courts? You said that do we need the, the question frontally. Okay, go on. Do we need the courts to prove that you anyway? answer the question frontally. Go ahead. Yes. ANDP validly nominated their candidate. He followed due process of nomination. First, ANPP, ANDP notified the commission that the party is going to conduct its primaries on XYZ date. And on that XYZ date, INEC monitored the conduct of that primaries. And when INEC monitored the conduct of that primaries, the, a candidate from ANDP emerged as the winner to flag the flag of ANDP. Now, ANDP proceeded to file the name of this candidate and his deputy in a prescribed form, in a prescribed form, as provided for by Section 31 of the Electoral Act. They have complied with the law. So if anybody is of the opinion or inclined to believe that ANDP filed a candidate who is short of the constitutional requirement, that takes us to Section 36, Section 31 of Section 6 of Electoral Act. That gives the, the court the, the, the privilege to look at the documents and ascertain whether such candidate is qualified Okay, Mr. Nene, I'm, no I'm wondering, just one moment, just one moment. I'm wondering if we needed to go as far as the court, if the you know, conditions of the law were to be fulfilled to the letter. But let's bring it back to Lagos. Yes, um, let me just quickly address uh, the point concerning the action that was filed by ANDP. Now, first, we must understand that the judgment that was given by the Supreme Court on the 13th day of February 2020 is a pre-election judgment. It's a, it's a judgment concerning pre-election. It is not a judgment concerning the election itself proper. Which affected the post-election decision. Exactly. Now, it's not that. So, what it did was to settle the question of eligibility to contest that 2019 election. That's what the Supreme Court settled. And therefore, if, if we are dealing with the election proper, because the Supreme just, Court just wasn't dealing moment, with the election proper... Just one moment before you go yes, on. Please. The, the decision of the Supreme Court, did it nullify the action of, the, of, the, of November? It didn't. It, 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 only set, it only set the record straight as these are the people who ought to have contested this election. Consequently... Nothing more. 
consequently, you're saying that the, the decision, the declaration of that day is still superior to that of the Supreme Court. Is that what you're saying? The declaration of... Uh, of November. Of November 17, as you have it said. It still subsists. It has not been annulled. The declaration that was made that day is not the only thing is that by virtue of the fact that because all those results still remain there, except the one for the APC, where they said, look, because you are not supposed to be in this contest, therefore all votes that you got by implication are wasted votes. So, so that is not to say that it changes what the score or the result or the declaration that was made in favor of the PDP that is, you know, that was declared to be the winner or that was returned as the winner. He doesn't change the, the score, just like that, in respect of other political parties. Now, let me even take up the issue of, uh, uh, of um, the concerning the declaration, I mean, the, 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 the pre-election matter. Mm -hmm. Now, if INEC has written to you on the 27th that, look, you are not going to be in this ballot, by virtue of the fact that your nomination is what? 40. Now, what does that mean? If you go to section 285, subsection 14 of the 1999 constitution. He calls it, it requires, it's a pre election matter and requires that you must take out an action at the regular court within 14 days from when that injury. But what about the position of the majority judgment which says that, well, for INEC not to have notified them that they were not on the ballot, that they found out on the day of election? As a result of not replying to With the letter respect, that they wrote. Yeah, that may be the majority, but of course I read the dissenting judgment, and the digesting judgment captured all the facts. We may probably turn out to be the real judgment, perhaps at the, at the appellate level. But maybe, at the moment, it's still two maybe, one. <laughs> yes, at the moment, the majority judgment is a law, as it were, because they didn't see it. But let me even leave that, because if I go to, that's why I'm saying that, as far as this case is concerned, there are very many fundamental constitutional issues that the court needs to decide. Like I said, if the tribunal sat and the time was to expire in May and they now came to give judgment in August. The question is that do they have the power to extend and enlarge their powers or to extend the time within which to sit? And in any event, on what basis can even the current governor and his deputy be sued when the provision of section 308 of the constitution is there? In other words, what I'm trying to say, the immunity clause what they've been makes it there? impossible for that action to be taken against them. Because one, at the time the action was brought, they were already a sitting governor. They were neither a candidate, All right, well, nor, you know, they were neither just, aspirants, nor they are, were they just people who just won the election. All right, well, 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 winding down on this one. Okay, well, so there's an aberration let's... of the provision of section 308 of the Constitution that says that you cannot sue yeah, but... a sitting governor. I mean, they are, not, they are immune from being sued, okay. as it were. Well, Mr. Anane, about um, that position of the majority judgment, which says that you found out on election day, that those who say, look, from, even from the point of law, that cannot be because there are processes leading to that election. You would have received a lot of correspondence, and they would have published names. You clearly would have seen that your candidate's name were not there. So how could you then claim that it was on election day you found out that you were excluded? Chamberlain, when I said that my learned friend is not abreast of the facts, he just as to say I'm being hard on him. I next wrote a letter in September 2019 stating that the name and the logo of NDP is not going to be on the ballot. On the 3rd of October 2019, NDP wrote a letter to INEC in response of their letter, September letter, stating the fact that you lack the constitutional power and the legal power to exclude ANDP and its candidate from participating in the election. The letter further went ahead to urge INEC to rescind its decision immediately and include the name and the logo of ANDP in Bayelsa State's gubernatorial election. INEC never replied that letter. Go to INEC and ask them. They never replied that letter. So if the and in law, silence is consent. The ANDP was led to believe that INEC has, you know, taken a recent the decision in view of the fact that they lack hey, the legal Anne. power to disqualify their candidate. They All right, just, their, just hold their, on. Their, wait, wait. their supporters just, just one thing. went to the pool. Hang on a minute. And went it to is, the pool to participate when you say in, in law, When you say in law, Silas is concerned, do you agree with that? Is uh, it the same? In, in this case, INEC has already made his position known on the 27th of September that 
you are not going to be in this ballot. Okay. So at that period, at we, that time, the, you have been put on notice. All right. So well, 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 that silence in law. The, uh, the the letter you wrote on the third of October is it a court order? Well, well, that we, is mandating. We'll take you from that point here. when we come back in just a moment. Please stay with us. Mr. Nene, let's get back to you on this one because, I mean, he has responded saying, look, yes, INEC did write and subsequently they went ahead and published those details having notified you that you haven't fulfilled the requirements so you couldn't have been claiming unlawful exclusion if you haven't been validly nominated. Go ahead and respond to that, please. You see, you see this, these are the issues, these are the impunities going on in INEC. And I urge on the women in Nigerians to, to put INEC on their toes or ask them to do the proper thing. I see no reason why INEC shouldn't have replied that letter of 3rd October 20, 2019. We simply replied the letter written by INEC stating the reasons. You don't have the power to exclude us from the ballot. We urge you to include our name and our party logo in the ballot. INEC never replied that letter. And he's saying that it doesn't matter. So what to him... A letter by INEC on 27th of September makes it font too official. INEC, that has become a court judgment that you cannot even appeal against. That is, that, that is impunity. INEC could have replied that letter to say, we stand by our decision. Then, then court of action could have arisen. But they didn't do that. We are led to, 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 to believe that INEC read our letter, digested it, and came to the conclusion that they were wrong in excluding us. But that never happened. Let me also address the issue of Section 308. He read, he didn't read it very well. Section 308 does not avail any sitting governor when it comes to a sitting governor or president when it comes to election petition tribunal. Immunity clause does not avail them. That was why Atiku Abubakar took Buhari to court in 2019 general election. Buhari was still having his immunity. Immunity didn't stop Atiku from taking him to court up to Supreme Court. So he should not deceive Nigerians. There is no immunity here when it comes to election petition matter. And once the Supreme Court the, 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 took that decision on the 13th of February 2020. Anything that took place on the 17th of September, as the 17th of November 2020, uh, 2019, amounts to nothing. It's illegal. It's void. You cannot put something on nothing. Okay, and expect hold on, Mr. Nene. Just, Just hold on. Hold on a minute. Now, with, with due respect to my learned colleague, the question I want to put to him is that something happened since September. You didn't bother to file the action because what you are asking for is to say you were excluded. That's simply the issue you submitted before the tribunal. You were excluded before 16th of November and you knew it. You did not file the action. Why then did you file the action on the, 20, on the 26th of February? Long after the election has ended, a winner had been declared, somebody was to be sworn in, and in fact, they've even sworn in governors, and you now said, Governor and the Deputy Governor, you are now bringing the action on the 26th. For an injury, you complained that happened since when? Since 27th of September. Is that not what in law you call an action that was taken malafide? Then, on the issue that you talked about on Section 308, I say this because one, if at the time Bwari was contesting, the moment you send in your nomination, you are only a contestant at that moment. That's how the Constitution regards you to be. Now, if you win and you've not been sworn in, you are only an elected person. You are not the person as the office requires you to be. But the moment you are sworn in, your status automatically changes. And that is why the provision of Section 308 is invoked. So, by and large, what I'm trying to say is that before you contest the election, if your party has nominated you, you remain a nominated candidate for that purpose, and therefore your status is not because you are probably a sitting president. Your status will not be looked upon as a sitting president because you are contesting for the election. When the election is contested and the winner is declared, it happens that you are the one that was declared. Right. You become somebody that has been elected, and therefore the, we are still still open to be challenged. But after you have been sworn in, we do respect your status automatically changes by the constitution. So that is the point I'm making here, that by that declaration, when Supreme Court made the declaration, or made a return, or rather made that declaration that, look, this man is not qualified, APC don't have candidates. 
Okay. And that's it, well, give it to PDP. Wait, wait, it wait, doesn't wait. mean if I, they have challenged it, there is no problem. But the moment I net made a declaration and they were sworn in, okay. that uh, very I, night, the status of my guy changes and they become governor and deputy governor there's that another, will enjoy. There's another aspect in that report which we will address, but I, I know Mr. Nene would like to respond to some of the issues that you raised before we put that question in. So could you go ahead and respond to it? Yeah, Chamberlain, thank you once again. You see, my little friend doesn't understand the way election petition works. If you, you, you see, what happened to ANDP was a clear case of exclusion. And ANDP waited for the constitution of Baeza State Gubernatorial Election Petition Tribunal. And once that tribunal is validly constituted, NDP approached the tribunal for redress. I don't know why he's asking us, why didn't we do this? Why didn't we do that? It's, not, it's no longer an issue. He has been overtaken by an event. Once, once a, 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 there is a constitution of tribunal to look into the conduct of 2019 Baeza State gubernatorial election. Any party who felt aggrieved can approach the tribunal. And that is what we did. Now, what is telling us that today, if you, if you are contesting an election and you, and you won, you have not been sworn in, you are immunity abets. Once you are, you are sworn in, you are immunity abets. All right, gentlemen, let's bring in that, this why issue for... If you took Buhari to, to spring court, okay, even when on. immunity let, has well, returned... I'd like both of you to respond to... This part of the report which you played before you came out, we saw people jubilating and many are wondering, upon where is this coming from? I mean, ruling is getting different interpretations from different people. Now, for those who were jubilating in Bielsa, Mr. and I are talking about uh, uh, the APC candidates, whether or not they're going to contest. Could you address these things? Where do they get this from? What is the position of the law and what could likely happen? Well, you see, I'm not holding brief for APC, but I'm just a lawyer. You know, as a, a priest in the Temple of Justice, I can address issues to the best of my knowledge. One, there are switches of election in Nigeria. We have general election, and even general election in Nigeria has lost its meaning because it's not so general again. Because Anambra State, Oshun State, and some other states are not participating in the general election when it regards to gubernatorial election. Now, we have a by-election, like the one that is coming up on the 30th of October this year, if there is a vacancy arising from death or voluntary resignation or insanity or something like that, then political parties, political parties in by-election are allowed to do fresh nomination because there is a by-election. Now, there is what we call fresh election. If you give it a literary interpretation, probably that is what Bysans are giving it, a literary interpretation of fresh election. Tribunal ordered a fresh election. Fresh election means everything is fresh. A fresh nomination, a fresh conduct of election, and a fresh return. So that's why they, 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 are, they are jubilating. Well, what but then happens case, to the Supreme Court if position? The Supreme Court, if this matter goes to Supreme Court, yeah. If this matter goes to Supreme Court and Supreme Court upheld the decision to say there shall be a fresh election, what it means to ordinary bias who is jubilating is that there will be a fresh nomination in which their candidate of choice may be nominated by his political party or by another political party to contest for right. the rerun election. So that is, that is why they are jubilating. Okay. But for me, a court must speak into this and say whether... Fresh election means fresh nomination. Or fresh election includes fresh nomination. Or fresh election is just for a rerun. A rerun means run again. Those who ran before can now go back and run again. So it's a, it's a whole gamut of uh, legal technicalities right. that okay. the court needed to you decide just on. Go ahead. Well, um, as to the jubilation, mm -hmm. the, that is purely within the purview of the political party. Because they probably have their nuances concerning how to interpret that mm, judgment. But from the point of law, mm. now, is it valid jubilation or the, just what? No, you don't, the issue of valid jubilation, I mean, uh, jubilation does not, you don't have valid or invalid jubilation. No, because you can, if, you if can, the You can jubilate says, for wrongfulness, you can jubilate for rightfulness, but whatever you have, like I said, it is the intent mm. of those who are, I the mean. The intent is they it, feel it, that their candidate can contest if this matter gets to Supreme well, Court. Well, nobody, nobody, nobody has told me that they feel, but the truth remains that even if the court, I mean, if let's even assume without conceding mm -hmm. that that's going to be the position, that they, there's, a, there's going to be a fresh election, 
the position has been settled by the Supreme Court that if their own part candidate, their choice candidate, will not be is not qualified by implication to be in the election. That's as it stands now. Yes. What this case gets to the Supreme Court, and Supreme Court rules that there shall be fresh election. Even if they rule that there will be fresh election by the pronouncement they made. The earlier judgment. Yes, by the it still subsists. It still subsists. It has not in any way given a reinvigoration or resurrected. Mm. Even though, even though that conversation, right. that decision of the Supreme Court was more about the deputy governor, no, it doesn't matter. Mm. They, they got both have a joint ticket. Yeah. Mm. All right, gentlemen, we do thank you for sharing your perspectives. Uh, Matthias Emeribe, legal practitioner, and the Malo National Legal Advisor to ANDP. Thank you for your thoughts. We will be back in a moment. Stay with us. <laughs>